Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? Got him. All right. Oh, yeah. Quality Green Bay fish here. Green Bay fish here. We are headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what a specimen. specimen. Here he comes, man. Get him. Oh. What a fish. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Well, this is the start of our open water season here at In-Depth Outdoors. Uh, obviously, last week we closed out our ice fishing episodes, but we didn't stop broadcasting. We're here on open water now, and a bit of a homecoming of sorts for me. We're on the Mississippi River, uh, Pool 4 at Red Wing, where I kind of got my start. Uh, I guided here full time for over a decade, and I'll be fishing with Eric Rayberg today. We're gonna go pick him up at the, the dock. Um, target today, of course, is huge pre-spawn walleye. So with a little luck, we'll get to see some of the biggest fish of the season come over the gunnels of the boat. So stick around. I think you're going to love today's show. Good morning. Morning. Do you have to stop and eat breakfast or? Yeah, <laughs> we wasted a few minutes uh, getting some fuel in this thing. Well, you kind of need that. They don't run for free. No, unfortunately not. It'll get two little ones sitting here waiting for you. You got a couple off the dock? Yeah. All right. I had to keep myself busy. Well, there's some walleye fisherman fuel. <laughs> beef sticks and uh, Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew and beef sticks. That's all a guy needs. <laughs> Hand me the food. You can keep the anchor. <laughs> Got it. Beautiful sunrise. Yes, very nice. Nice morning so far. And 11, 12, right there. And fish on the break. One there, one there. It's gonna be a sunscreen day, Eric. Yes, I believe so. There won't be a lot of snow left by the time we're done with today. I sure wouldn't think so. Not a whole lot left around this neck of the woods right now. I'm sure up north still got some left, but. Still plenty of it, yeah. There's fish. Ooh, that one's right. Everything about it feels good right now, anyway. Everything looks right on that one. Boom! That's what this time of year is all about. We don't give two shakes about catching fish to eat. This is all about catching your biggest wally of the year right here. Sun just come up. Feels good. Gonna be 70 degrees today. Fishing one of my favorite bodies of water with a really good buddy. Everything about this feels right. Everything looks right. It's too soon to tell. It feels good. If it ends up being a world record bullhead, I will be disappointed. <laughs> Here he comes. Big mama walleye. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Come here, mama. Thank you. I'm wrapped in the fin there. Fish number one, about 10 minutes into the day. That's why we come here. That's why all the people come here for a shot at a fish like that. And I'm not gonna poo poo with this fish at all. That's probably a eight and a half, nine pound fish. We'll get bigger today. All right, we're gonna let that fish go. These aren't for eating. These are for having fun with and enjoying. Woo. <laughs> Nothing graceful about that release. Here's what we're fishing. Uh, this time of year, it's all about baits that rattle, have a lot of vibration to them, help these fish find these baits in this dirty, dirty water. I got that fish in a number seven rip and wrap. Eric's fishing a blade bait, and uh, those two baits have a lot in common in that when you pick them up on the lift, they give off a lot of vibration or rattle. This one's got it both, vibration and rattle. Uh, the bait that uh, Eric's fishing doesn't have any rattles in it, but they both do a great job of helping fish find these baits in the stained water. All right, man. Good start. Yes, it was. <laughs> That fish just beamed it too. It's that time of year.
Skeeter Boat Center, with its flagship dealership located in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, has opened a second location in Ramsey, Minnesota, to better serve their customers. Stop in and check out the largest selection of Skeeter boats in the Upper Midwest, including an extensive inventory of MX and WX models, and a wide range of Skeeter bass boats, all backed by our best price guarantee, and serviced by Yamaha 5-star service technicians. Find us online at SkeeterBoatCenter.com. And remember, our goal is to help you have fun fishing. All we're doing is throwing these baits out and just letting the current sweep them. Bait touches the bottom, pop it up. Wait for it to pop the bottom again, pop it back up. Very simple. And you get kind of a timing, a rhythm going. I'm not saying you can fish it without looking or anything, but once you got that rhythm down, then it's real easy. Sometimes we throw out deep, other times right behind the boat. The fish are scattered all over the place, so there's no real spot on the spot. And one of the things we love about these, this style of baits is we can fish them aggressively, make long casts, cover lots of water, and because we're not really fishing a, you know, a tiny little spot on the spot, these fish are out over a large area, that becomes a big benefit to us. You don't want or need real hard, aggressive jig strokes, just enough to get a little bit of vibration out of that bait. Let it sink back to the bottom. What you got going there, Eric? I got a fish. You got a big one? Yeah, not huge, but... Need the net? Yeah, I think I can get it in the hand. Well done, sir. Oh, yeah. I'm over here telling people how it's supposed to be done. You're showing them. Cold weather, nice active fish. It's a quality fish, female. Right in the side, side of the mouth there. It's going to pop off. I might need a player's here by the looks of it. I got it for you, right here. There you go. She wasn't going anywhere. What funky kind of color is that? I don't know, someone caught some fish on Fire Tiger earlier, so. Well, you can blame the color selection on me, but you can't blame that paint job on me. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not a huge fish by any means, but a nice healthy female and getting ready to, to do her thing. And get her back and let her do it. And the way she goes. That was kind of like an orange tiger, wasn't it? Yeah, just a little variation. I guess I don't know that it matters a, a whole lot when you're in the reaction bite that these create, but... Uh, well, there's three colors, right? There's bright, dark, and metallic. Pretty much. <laughs> we'll look for another one. You know, once the water gets dirty, sunny days like this, they're great to fish in, but the fish actually bite better under these kind of conditions than if you had overcast or rainy or cloudy. They need the light to see. Here they come, hey. man. Got some sun. Got a little sun. Put a little pep in their step. Can eat net. Not a huge fish by any means, but uh, nice healthy fish. A little bit bigger than the last one. Well, that's two in a row for you, bud. Two casts in a row. That's the way we like it. I'm gonna grab that net. I hate being up current of the <laughs> fish being netted. There you go. And we thank you, sir. That actually looks like a Surprisingly, it looks like a male. Nice, real healthy male. A bigger side for the males, but uh, as you can see, he's uh, getting ready to do his duty. We'll let him go and let him do it. So let's talk rods, reels, and line, and how that plays into these two different presentations. Uh, when you're fishing that larger profile bait, uh, that rip and wrap, you really want to fish a medium action rod. A uh, medium light's going to be too light. Uh, you're going to have to overwork and really lift hard on that bait to get any kind of movement or action. For the blade baits, you're going to want a, a medium light. Uh, you don't want a real stiff, heavy action rod because what you're going to do is you're going to overwork those baits and you're just not going to get very many bites. And uh, on all the rods we're using here today, we're fishing a no stretch braided line. Um, I'm using Suffix 832 and I'm using a pretty fine diameter line. This is the 10 pound test uh, and I think it's about a four pound diameter. And the reason we use such a thin diameter line is really pretty simple. Uh, we want as limited amount of resistance coming through the water as possible. Uh, we don't want to get a big bow in the line, and that's what happens if you use a real heavy, large diameter braid. Sure, you don't have any stretch, which is great for hook sets, but that heavier braid becomes a problem in current like this. So uh, medium light for the blades, medium for the uh, larger rip and wraps, and braided line, that suffix 832 all around. Uh, if, you, if you do that, you're going to be a lot more successful fishing these baits. Mm. 
Three Dude, cast in a row. Three in a row. What are we going to do with you? A little sun come out and put a pep in their step. and Same size? You, you may have got the first one, but I'm coming on strong. This one, actually, might be a touch bigger. You got the line wrapped on his fin there. Yeah, she hit the bait, but she got yeah. her fin wrapped around the line. Nope, oh, here goes the bait. Actually, looks like another another male still milking. milking. You better put that fish yeah. over to the side before she wants uh, to go. <laughs> you ended up wearing quite a bit of that. Yeah, it's that time of year, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was three in a row. I'll get the heck out of your way. I don't want to <laughs> deprive you of an opportunity to do four in a row. We'll go for it and see what happens. At Skeeter Boats, our passion for turning great ideas into even better fishing boats has produced an unmatched lineup of models intended to fit the way you fish. Like the WX series, designed to handle big water in tough conditions, including the new MX1825, built from the ground up to be the ultimate 18-foot fishing boat, and Skeeter Bass Boats, setting the standard for speed and fishability. Skeeter, engineered like no other. Such a classic scenario to have these fish, you know, out a little bit deeper in the morning and then on these bright sunny days where you get this warm weather for those fish to roll up real, real shallow. Most guys don't go shallow enough on these warm sunny days pre-spawn. Yeah, dark water warms up even that much quicker and... Get out over some dark colored sand, absorb those rays. I mean, how deep you figure it is up there? Uh, five, seven to four, four to seven feet? Yeah, five, five, six feet and in a little farther, yeah, probably that three, four. Everybody's always, you know, used to vertical jigging the channel edge, you know, staying out in that deeper water. And when the water's clear, you know, earlier in the season before the melt-off starts, that's where you're going to find most of your fish. But yep. now that we've got so much color in the water, those fish get a lot shallower, particularly on these sunny, sunny days. You actually be able to see it in the in the color of the fish too, of of where they're sitting or have been sitting for most of the day. Their color will actually change from a, a pale to a, a dark golden based on, on where they're sitting in the shallower sunlight or out in the deeper, deeper dark water. Fish hunt just crushed it way up in there. That one was way up inside, Eric. I won't mind if we get some more up there. They'll, those fish up shallow are always so aggressive, they just beat on the baits. Yes, they are. I don't think this is a giant fish by any means, but holy smokes, did it pull that line tight. Definitely a walleye. Uh, decent fish. Thank you, sir. Hand me my fat lady. That one's got double set of trebles in her mouth, which is just what you want to see. We'd been working the break for the first part of the morning here, and the fish kind of slowed down a little bit. So of course, we just turned around and started throwing up shallow. That was my first cast up there. Not as big as some of our fish, but I tell you what, it's the best hit I've had all day. She really hit it hard. See you later, sweetheart. Fish out. All right, right next to the boat. I'm gonna grab that net. That'll get my attention. <laughs> Never see a grown man run so fast until you see that. That's the real deal right there. He's right here. Just by seeing it, I was gonna be like eight pounds or so. Yeah, I think he might be more than that. Oh, mamacita. <laughs> I think he might be more than that. Oh yeah. That's what we're looking for this time of year. You can see that belay just sideways across his mouth. No doubt about that one. That's what we come to pool for in the spring for. Nice fish, buddy. I'll let it be your turn now. Thank you. Let's not, you know, complicate things by getting a <laughs> double or anything. I'll share. Awesome job, bud. And away she goes. Here's the bait that we're, uh, we've been using midday. Um, it's actually a, a bait that um, Eric makes. Uh, pours them himself, very effective, a much smaller profile bait, quarter of an ounce. Um, really nothing fancy to it. Uh, just about every bait shop along the river sells a version similar to this. And you can see, here's that rip and wrap that I was using this morning. I was using a different color, but this is a size seven. You can see the much larger profile. This has got uh, internal rattles in it. And you can just hear what it does as soon as I tap it. Middle of the day, once that sun got up, 
Uh, the fish didn't want anything to do with that bait anymore. I mean, it's so much larger, it's so much more aggressive and loud that the fish didn't want that. They wanted that blade bait, which also gives off a lot of vibration, just no rattles. Uh, now, I do expect that as that sun starts to get lower this afternoon, I'll go back to these ripping wraps and see if that doesn't put some more big fish in the boat. But that's been our arsenal today. Two baits, we've switched colors a little bit, but uh, just picking the right location and sticking after it. I mean, we have not had you know, fish after fish by any means. It's not that kind of bite yet. This bite will actually get better in a, in a week or two weeks. Um, but we've been on a good spot. We've been very methodical about it and trusted these presentations and uh, the results have been fantastic. Some really big fish today. Oh, did he just absolutely crush. You don't like me talking. Less talking, more fishing. I agree, that's, that's a good fish. Yeah, it's kind of giving them head shakes. I haven't seen it yet, but. Give me a second, give me some time, give me some time. We're running, we're running low, I think. I'm here for you, brother. Oh yeah. Nicely done, right on the snoot. Tip of the snoot. Steal players right away. Not as chunky as they can be down here, but uh, still definitely a, a nice healthy fish. These fish are, are sitting just inside the current seams here. Got one. And it looks like James has another fish on. Uh, but you, you can you get the, the current just right and you get the, the bait floating through there just right and you can just feel it that it's right. And more times than not, if the fish are there, you're going to get them. So we got this one. <laughs> hey, you got the little guy. Hey, don't point it out like that. <laughs> that is a chubbo. We'll let this one go and go on after the next one. This one deserves honorable mention for being our only double of the day, I think. So far. Yeah, so far. Honda power and reliability have been combined with Strikemaster's legendary ice cutting technology to produce the 35cc Honda Light. Powered by a powerful and efficient engine, the 35cc Honda Light offers first pull reliability and weighs in at a feather light 23 pounds when equipped with an 8 inch laser auger. This winter, pick up a Honda 35cc Light from Strikemaster, the most reliable and fastest cutting four stroke auger on the ice. You know, and uh, a lot of times we, we hear from people that watch the shows, they, they see what we're doing and they look around at the background and they think that, you know, where we're fishing is the only spot to be and really the, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, you know, we've slid up and down this current break within 200 yards all day long looking for the areas where uh, we can present a bait properly uh, along that transition of fast water to slow water. Uh, there's lots of spots up and down the river that present this same type of scenario. So don't get locked into thinking that you're looking for a magic spot. You're looking for uh, a spot that's really readily found. You just have to learn how to fish it. And uh, using these presentations and just this real basic understanding of, you know, fast water brings food to fish sitting in slower water. Uh, if you can get your baits to work from fast to slow, uh, you're gonna catch fish. It doesn't necessarily have to be right here. Uh oh, uh oh, invaded, oh yeah, invaded your place, and you, missed, even... and you missed one. I left you on, I'm okay with that man, I am okay with that. That fish is going nowhere. There we go. Not just a super a... tanker, but in just another nice big, healthy fish. You get a lot of people that would uh, Blade just go out of their way to catch a fish that size. Just another beautiful Mississippi River gold. Get her back in the water here and go search for another one. Got him. Big fish, just a flipping giant. Yes. I didn't even know you had a fish on. <laughs> I didn't even know you had a fish on. You might have to come back. Uh. That is a pig. That one might be worthy of the scale. Uh, there we go. River <laughs> giant there. We're putting together a fine mess of fish. You know, it's early yet. Anybody thinking about coming down to Red Wing here on the Mississippi River, you're gonna time it about right in the next couple weeks. 
That is just a pig. You add this one to the other fish that we've caught already today and we've had a phenomenal day with some hours yet to go using what I consider to be just an absolute blast of a technique. Ripping wraps, blade baits, just twitching them. Fish like that come in and just pound these baits and make it so much fun. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Let her go. I mean, what a, just a chub. Awesome, awesome fish. Between that one and some of the other big walleyes we've had today, we got time to go yet. We're not done. I mean, every time we come down here in the spring, we're always looking for that 12 pounder, you know? But uh, that's a step in the right direction right there. See you later, sweetheart. She's gonna make a lot of babies and they're gonna grow big and fat and come and hit my blade bits. <laughs> That's cool stuff, buddy. Nicely done. You know, one of the things you always wanna keep in mind when using this kind of presentation or really fishing spring walleyes in general is, you know, less is more. Uh, fishing plastics, fishing blades, fishing those rattle baits we were fishing earlier this morning. Um, guys tend to want to overfish them so they can feel the bait, they can feel the rattle, or they can feel the vibration. And they, they overdo that to the point where uh, it, the bait becomes too active, too aggressive, and these fish in cold water won't hit it. Um, so really, you know, less is more. Uh, tiny little jig strokes. If you're gonna move the bait, only feel just a few vibrations before you stop that jig stroke. Uh, if you're fishing a rattle bait, uh, you can actually hear them. Uh, even in current like this, in eight, 10 foot of water, when you jig that bait, you can hear it. But uh, if you can hear it above water, trust me, the fish down there are uh, really able to uh, sense that bait and it's really just gonging like a bell down there. So tame it down a little bit. And uh, if you do, you're gonna catch a lot more fish that way. Ooh, attaboy. Is that the one we're looking for? Eh, that or a carp. Tell you what, I'm gonna stay up here for just a little bit. That seems to help turn your fish into walleye. Eh. If I run down there with the net right away, then they seem to turn into fish with big guys and funny scales. Uh, I'll do whatever it takes. Seems to have the right head shake. What was he? He's that, a that, that tail slap sounded a little small. Not as big as he acted. That's a decent fish. Decent female. Nice, healthy, healthy Mississippi walleye. It look like we won't get that big fish here right at the end of the day, but it doesn't matter at all. Had a great day. Got to get back on what amounts to my home waters if there is such a thing. Spend it with Eric. Eric's a great guy. Of course, I only get to see and fish with him down here once a year, basically. So it's kind of an anniversary of sorts. Where we'll go next from here, who knows? It's going to be a river. All the lakes are frozen, so um, most likely walleyes, but where? No idea. Um, we're not gonna pull the plug just yet, but for all intents and purposes, we've done everything we set out to accomplish here today. The bite is definitely on and gonna get better here at Red Wing on the Mississippi River. So from Eric and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.